Welcome everyone to the Bucket List Reviews. My name is Gibran and this is the second part video of the best films of 2016. Last week, I focused on 20 till 11 and this week, we'll look at 10 to number 1. So if you haven't seen the previous list, pause this video, have a look at the previous list and then come back to this list. The link of the video is in the description. So anyways, let's begin with the list from 10 to 1. Number 10 Julieta. Julieta is yet another drama by Pedro Almodovar, set around well-written and extremely well-acted female protagonists. The plot centers around a middle-aged Julieta, played by Emma Suarez, who learns that her long-lost daughter has resurfaced in Madrid. This begins a painful reflection by Julieta into her checkered past, flashing back to the moments of pain that define her current life. For me, the most interesting aspect of the Spanish master filmmaker is having an extremely delicate mixture of serious drama tiptoeing around a sense of comedy behind it. Whichever way you want to perceive it, it's amazing. There's also this spectacular sense of art direction in the film, very reminiscent of Hitchcock, that defines the tone of that particular scene. It's a pity that this film got snubbed at the Oscars, but if you're a lover of alternative cinema and Almodovar, Julieta is brilliant in every way. Number 9 the Salesman This Iranian film tells the story of a married couple who faced tragedy when an intruder invades their apartment in the absence of the husband and now the husband is in search for the culprit throughout the film. The Salesman is a quasi-thriller and an unconventional suspense film that creates tension in an extremely low-key fashion that you're not even sure where the film will take you. It features fantastic performances from the two main leads and a great visual contrast constantly intercutting between the fictional theater set pieces to the real-life drama that the couple is facing through. The Salesman is nominated for an Academy Award at the moment, and my guess is that Faraday is going to take home the goal once again. Number 8 The Handmaiden You know what never gets old? Park Chung-wook's insane sense of humor. The Handmaiden is yet another gem from the master Korean filmmaker who explores the Japanese occupation of Korea pre-Second World War, but the film isn't actually about that. It's about the con job of a low-life con artist and a handmaiden who tried to swindle a young Japanese lady of her inheritance. The Handmaiden is unique because the suspense and unpredictability keeps you guessing throughout the film, and it's a film that I've grown to appreciate months after watching it. It's a crazy mixture of gore and dark humor, and is certainly one of the year's best. Number 7 L Sometimes when you watch a good film, you admire its craft, but the details hit you much later after you've seen and digested the film. Elle is definitely one of those films. Elle is an eerie psychological thriller that follows the life of Michelle, a tough as nails woman of the modern era who has systematically become more and more jaded with her surroundings and longs for excitement in her life. But the film begins with the brutal rape of Michelle by an unknown intruder and from there on, she tries to cope up with the incident and personally investigates the identity of the culprit. Elle can so easily be mistaken as a film which glorifies rape and rape culture. But nothing could be further from the truth. Paul Verhoeven takes a very intelligent approach to sexuality and the numbness of our modern society towards personal tragedies. But of course, this film probably would have never worked if not for Isabel Huppert's amazing performance. Not going to reveal too much, but this film is certainly a gem that perhaps could climb higher on the list in the next coming year or so. Number 6 I, Daniel Blake If there's anyone, anyone who should have been nominated for Best Actor, Dave Jones and I, Daniel Blake should have been it. I, Daniel Blake is a story of a 59-year-old British joiner who, after suffering from a heart attack, seeks help from the state. Naturally, the broken welfare system of England throws him into a bureaucratic cycle that purposely denies him any sort of financial compensation. He's later accompanied by Katie, a single parent of two, who suffers a similar issue and together try to help each other out. This film is as real as it gets. No bullshit, no drama. This is what real people with poor backgrounds suffer from. Ken Loach is quite famous for depicting real life political issues on screen, but I, Daniel Blake, I feel, is one of my favorite films of his since Kiss. Loach portrays on film what clearly is a broken, manipulative welfare system which is created to rob the regular Joe of their rightful welfare from the state. Please do not ignore this film for its serious subject matter. This film is a proof how constructive cinema could be for society. I, Daniel Blake, in my opinion, should be a mandatory screening for every working class, blue or white collar citizen of the world. Number 5 after the Storm After the Storm is another brilliant low-key film from the masterful Japanese filmmaker 
Hirokazu Koreeda. The film tells a tale of a father who is at his lowest point of his life, wants to make amends with his ex-wife and his child. It's an extremely simple story, but layered with rich characterization and beautiful cinematography. If you're into films that depict slice of life stories or believable scenarios and relatability, after this song will definitely not disappoint you. And it actually makes me genuinely happy that such simple films still exist in the world of cinema. Number 4. Nocturnal Animals As I mentioned in my review, Tom Ford is one of my favorite directors working right now. After 7 years of gap, he returned this year with another work of art also known as Nocturnal Animals. The story centers around Amy Adams' character, who has gifted a soon-to-be-published novel by her ex-husband. As the film cuts between the fictional world of the book and the real-life world of unsatisfactory lifestyle, Adams is constantly being torn apart between fiction and reality. As I've heavily discussed this in my review, Nocturnal Animals features amazing performances and a real sense of tension that you can't look away from. The breathtaking montages and match cuts between two scenes clearly show that Tom Ford is a rare talent that clearly needs to make more films. It's a chilling experience that one should not miss out on. Number 3. Son of Zol the Academy Award winner of 2016, Son of Zol is technically a 2015 film but was released late in Germany. But I could not dare to miss this film off my list because this is a marvel of filmmaking. Son of Zol tells a grim story of a Zonder commando in a Nazi death camp who comes across a young boy's corpse and somehow is convinced that he is his son and from there on searches for a rabbi to give the boy a proper Jewish burial. It's hard to believe that this Hungarian masterpiece is Lazo Nemesis' directorial debut. The craft behind the film clearly depicts the endless possibilities of filmmaking. If you think you've seen enough Holocaust films, trust me, Son of Zol is unlike any other. A film that should be compulsory watch for anyone who dares not to repeat past horrors of humanity. So I was pretty divided in these last two films on my list. Both of these were not only fantastic films that left me completely emotionally devastated, but in the end, I had to really analyze which of these films really lingers on with me since I first saw it. And now, I've made my decision. Number 2. Moonlight Moonlight is an indie film that has truly taken the American cinema by complete surprise. The story is about a tender young boy named Chiron who is torn between fitting in his black community and coming to terms with his sexuality. The film divides itself in three different parts, the young boy Chiron, the teenager and the adult. The film is directed by Barry Jenkins, who is not unknown to the visual medium but never quite hit so big as with Moonlight. The film seems very personal and a lot of times extremely real. Through subtle camera work and editing, Moonlights explore solitude in a society which would never accept for who you really are, an oddity clashing with the norms of the society. Every one of the performances in the film are truly brilliant and heartbreaking, especially Maharshala Ali. The visuals are very poetic and incredibly well crafted. And even though the story takes place in the black suburbs of Miami, the visual storytelling is very European and can clearly tell the influences that Jenkins had in making films. It's truly unfortunate that the film wasn't very well received in the American black community due to its sexual nature, but I sincerely hope that this film reaches more people and can truly appreciate why such films deserve your money as well as your attention. So before we go on with the number one, here are my honorable mentions that were awesome films on their own but couldn't quite make the list. Sing Street by John Carney Under the Shadow by Babak Anwari Captain America Civil War by the Russo Brothers Hell or High Water by David McKenzie Ten Cloverfield Lane by Dan Trachtenberg Lo and Behold The Reveries of the Connected World by Werner Herzog Certain Women by Kelly Reichhardt and Hail Caesar by the Coen Brothers And my number one film is... Tickled Ever since my time in passion of reviewing films I can clearly sometimes tell midway through how the film is going to flow. And you gather that sense because with years of analyzing films, you accumulate that sense of predictability. But I can safely say that I clearly had no idea what the main premise of the documentary Tickle would be or in which direction will they going be with this. A story that could have been a silly obsession of tickling turns into something completely bizarre and surreal. A small time investigative reporter from New Zealand, Dave Ferrer, wants to do a story on a Facebook page about the obsession of tickling. But things take a clear left turn, which prompts Ferrer to indulge himself further down the rabbit hole. And this is all I'm going to say about this documentary because I really want you guys to discover this film like I did. This is one of the most gripping documentaries if not fiction films, that I've seen in the past five years. I clearly don't understand why people are not talking about this film more. Its insane premise became a goldmine for the director Dave Ferrer, and Tickle for me 
was the best film of 2016. As I've said this before, making a mediocre documentary and filmmaking is quite easy, but creating a compelling narrative out of it makes it a truly masterpiece of filmmaking. And to think, this whole project started off with a mere Kickstarter fun. Clearly shows that talent and storytelling are not bound to big budget productions. So go check out Tickled now. I can guarantee that you haven't seen anything like this before. So, two years countdowns, two magnificent documentaries came out on top. A coincidence indeed. If you want to check out my list of 2015 films, click right here. I hope my list could broaden the horizons of some viewers to check out more foreign films in the list. And as always, like, subscribe to the channel right here. And we'll see you the next time. So, ciao.